Today's lesson is red velvet cake, a culinary classic with a colorful past. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. Hello, I'm Kiki, and I am so excited, Roger, because red velvet cake is one of my favorite cakes. I think, first of all, when you see a red velvet cake, you just think it's so exquisite because the color of the cake itself is red, and then usually it comes with a white icing. So when you look at this color combination, you really think that it looks very elegant and it's nice. But actually, what is surprising is a lot of people don't know that red velvet cake has cocoa powder in it, so it's actually a chocolatey kind of flavor to it as well. And sometimes, though, people might think that red velvet is a bit too sweet because of the icing. But I think just like any dessert or any cake, you don't have to have a giant piece, right? Right. And I should、uh, recall that I think the first time I tried red velvet cake was at that buffet restaurant over in Boone. I went there with my parents. About ten years ago, and that's when I first realized that red velvet cake existed. And I tried a piece, and yes, indeed, it was oh so tasty. And that's why we're going to talk about it today. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson, and we'll come right back. Red velvet cake, a culinary classic with a colorful past. With its delicious taste and striking appearance, red velvet cake has captured the hearts and taste buds of dessert enthusiasts around the world. While its exact origin remains a mystery, it's widely believed to have emerged in the U.S. around 1910. 大家好，第一部分首先来看名词 velvet， 它的意思是丝绒或是天鹅绒，例如。The new fashion line combines velvet with leather in a variety of colors. 新的时尚系列让丝绒与各种颜色的皮革结合。或者 ，This velvet sofa is very comfortable, but a bit expensive. 这座天鹅绒沙发很舒服，但是有点贵。接下来是 striking 这个形容词，它的意思是引人注目的或是显著的。我们可以说 ，The striking beauty of the area made it a great place to take photographs. 此区引人注目的美景，使其成为拍照的好地方。或者是 ，Experts noticed a striking difference between the two paintings that were supposedly by the same artist. 专家注意到这两幅应该是出自同一画家之手的画作有明显的差异。All right. Let's start off by talking about the words in our title: "Red Velvet Cake," a culinary classic with a colorful past. Now, the word "red velvet." So, usually, when we think of velvet, it's actually a type of fabric. It's a type of fabric that is made from silk, cotton, or nylon, and one side of it has a shorter, thicker feel to it. So the fabric Fabric actually has two different textures, okay, on each side, and one side is a bit thicker, and it kind of pops out of the fabric. So when you think of velvet, it's very soft, and it's a type of fabric. Now, why is the word velvet used to describe this cake? I guess because the cake has a consistency or a texture like velvet. That is kind of an exquisite kind of cloth that is used in expensive clothing. And of course, this is a culinary classic. If something is culinary, it has to do with cooking, especially high-quality food. That's right. So let's start by reading our first part. With its delicious taste and striking appearance, red velvet cake has captured the hearts and taste buds of dessert enthusiasts around the world. So this cake, this red velvet cake, is delicious. It tastes very nice, and it's striking appearance. So the word striking means to be able to attract attention, but usually it's because it's kind of unusual or extreme or very prominent features. So something that makes it very noticeable, something that makes the appearance very noticeable. So we know that red velvet cake. It's not only special because of its taste. But by the way it looks, it does have that striking appearance. Indeed, it is very special, and、uh, other cakes don't really look like that. So it does rather stick out. 
and it has captured the hearts and taste buds of dessert enthusiasts around the world. So, of course, it captured the hearts. Of course, people have come to love this cake. And it's also captured their taste buds. Those, of course, are the little tiny things on your tongue that are responsible for tasting things. But in this particular case, we often say it's captured your taste buds. In other words, you've tried this and you really like it, and you want to eat more. And it's captured the taste buds of dessert enthusiasts around the world. So when somebody is an enthusiast, they are someone that is very enthusiastic, or somebody that really likes a certain topic, or really likes something. And not only do they like it, they want to share this knowledge with people. So, for example, there are bird enthusiasts. So they would go around. Bird watching, and they would learn more about these birds, and maybe they come across a certain situation where they will try to bring light to a certain situation. So, for example, if a type of bird is endangered, they're enthusiasts. They want to share with the public more, so people will know about this type of bird. So, in this case, a dessert enthusiast is somebody that really loves to eat dessert, and sometimes these dessert enthusiasts. They will try to find out more about the history and origins of a recipe. Right. So desserts refer to sweet foods that are usually eaten after a meal in the United States and maybe in Europe, and they involve cake and pie and things like that. And in this particular case, lots of people like red velvet cake because they are dessert enthusiasts and they probably eat a lot of desserts. And while its exact origin remains a mystery, it's widely believed to have emerged in the U.S. around 1910. So its exact origin is a mystery. Nobody really knows where it came from or who invented it. But most people believe it probably came from the United States around the year 1910, give or take a couple of years. So it emerged in the U.S. That means it came out from the U.S. at that time. Okay, that's the end of part one. Let's listen to part. Part two, where we find out how the cake gets its color. The cake owes its name to its red color and smooth, velvety texture. In early versions, the chemical reaction between cocoa and other ingredients gave the cake a darker red color. However, since food dyes became widely available in the 1930s, modern versions have typically had a bright red color. This led to a boom in the cake's popularity in the following two decades, but the cake then gradually fell out of fashion in the second half of the 20th century. The second part we're going to talk about is boom. This word has the meaning of increasing, increasing, or rising. We can say that after the war, many countries experienced a housing boom. After the war, many countries experienced a 许多国家经历了房价暴涨。接下来，我们看到片语 fall 或是 go 或是 be out of fashion， 它的意思是过时或是落伍。例如 ，This kind of hairstyle has already fallen out of fashion。这种发型已经过时了。或者 ，That model's fashion sense is thought to never go out of fashion。那位模特儿的衣着品味被认为永不过时。Okay, so again, today we're talking about red velvet cake, and why do we call it that? Well, here in the second part, it says the cake owes its name to its red color and smooth, velvety texture. So here we've got the phrase: it owes its name. It has this name because of the following reasons. It、uh, is called red velvet cake because it has this red color, which is unusual. There are not many cakes out there that are red in color, and it's also got this smooth, velvety texture. So velvet again is what we're talking about. It's a kind of cloth that is very smooth to the touch. So this cake is also like velvet, and we've changed the word velvet into its adjective form, velvety. It has this velvety texture, and texture, of course. Refers to what it looks like and how it feels in your mouth. In early versions, the chemical reaction between cocoa 
and other ingredients gave the cake a darker red color. So now we find out that its red color actually comes from a chemical reaction. So a chemical reaction is when two different types of chemical substances, when they are mixed together, they have change. They produce a sort of change. So in this case, when cocoa and other types of ingredients, when they're mixed together, they will have a dark red color. And here we have the word versions, which basically means. A particular form of something that is different in terms of a different previous form. So when you have different versions of something, you have a number of different forms of the same thing. So, for example, your first version of your essay is missing a lot of examples. So you have a second version which you've added more examples. So you've added on to make the previous better. Right.、Uh, for example, of. Of course, there have been many versions of different software applications. I remember I learned Windows on Win 3.1. That was an early version of that operating system, and it's gone through many different types or many different versions until the present one. I don't even know what it is. The one on my computer now is Win 7. I suppose I should update to a more advanced version one of these days. But in early versions of Red Velvet Cake, we had a chemical reaction. Going on between cocoa and other ingredients in the mixture, and that resulted in a darker red color. So that's an earlier version. I guess they kind of changed the ingredients around later on. However, since food dyes became widely available in the 1930s, modern versions have typically had a bright red color. So maybe they still have cocoa in there, and maybe they still have these chemical reactions, but they now use dyes to make the cake have a bright red color. It's not such a dull or dark red color, and a dye is just some kind of chemical that changes the color of something. So you can put your T-shirt in dye to make it. A blue T-shirt or a red T-shirt. Now, of course, you have to be careful when you're cooking. You want to make sure you're using food dye because you can't just use any dye. Some dyes, if you eat it, it might be toxic. Okay, so this led to a boom in the cake's popularity in the following two decades. But the cake then gradually fell out of fashion in the second half of the 20th century. So from the 30s and on to the 50s, red velvet cake became very popular. This led to a boom. So the word boom here is. Basically, a loud sound that you'll hear when something explodes, and sometimes when you want something to boom, it is to allow something to explode. Band. So sometimes we talk about a financial boom or a housing boom. So when a housing boom occurs, it's when properties and land their prices have suddenly risen by a lot, and that means people are making money. And in this case, the boom in the cake's popularity means a sudden increase in interest for people to want to eat red velvet cake. I could say, for example, there's been an electric bicycle boom in Taiwan. One in recent years, you see more and more of those electric bicycles on the roads. There's been a boom in them, a big increase. So that means the cake was very popular in the early part of the 20th century, but then the cake gradually fell out of fashion in the second half of the 20th century. So if something falls out of fashion, it is no longer popular, and it's getting harder and harder to find that thing. All right, that takes us to the end of part two. Let's listen to part three, where red velvet cake makes its comeback. More recently, though, the cake has become trendy again, thanks to various pop culture references. Furthermore, because the color red symbolizes joy and love, red velvet cakes have become popular treats to serve on holidays like Christmas and Valentine's Day. Today, the cake continues to delight dessert lovers everywhere with its unique flavor and eye-catching appearance, making it a timeless classic in the world of baking. The third part, to introduce the adjectives "trendy," means "fashionable" or "popular." We can say 
Emily spends too much on trendy clothes and shoes. Emily 花太多钱在时髦衣服和鞋子上。又或者说 ，The neighborhood has many trendy nightclubs. 那个地区有许多时髦的夜店。接着是单字 reference， 它是名词，指的是谈到、提及、咨询、查阅，也可以是引证的意思。例如 ，Throughout the book, there were many references to World War II. 这整本书多次提及第二次世界大战，或是 This novel has many references to video game culture, which has made it a hit amongst gamers. 这本小说有许多地方是参考电玩文化，因此大受电玩迷的欢迎。最后是动词 symbolize， 有象征或是代表的意思。举例来说 ，A skull and crossbones on a chemical container usually symbolizes danger or death. 化学容器上的骷髅头和交叉骨头通常是代表危险或致命。再看一个例子 ，For many, the Gucci brand symbolizes luxury. 对许多人来说 ，Gucci 这个品牌就代表奢华。Okay, so remember, at the end of the second paragraph, we said that、uh, red velvet cake fell out of fashion. In the second half of the 20th century, so from like 1950 on until the year 2000, the cake was less and less popular in the world and in the United States. But here in the third part of our lesson, it says more recently, though, the cake has become trendy again, thanks to various pop culture references. So it has become trendy, which means it has become popular. Lots of people want to have it. And they want to tell their friends that they had it, and that they know where there's a good bakery that makes great red velvet cakes, or a bakery that sells pieces that you can try, or restaurants that have it. So it's very trendy, it's very popular, and this is thanks to various pop culture references. And it's possible that a lot of people are seeing a lot more bakeries on, for example, Instagram or Facebook. So that could be a pop culture reference because a lot of people are posting all these pretty photos of desserts. Furthermore, because the color red symbolizes joy and love, red velvet cakes have become popular treats to serve on holidays like Christmas and Valentine's. So we know that the color red. Symbolizes or it represents joy and love, and the color red has a similar meaning or a similar symbol in both Western and Asian cultures. So this red velvet cake has become very popular because of its color. So now we can see that it is. Served on Christmas or Valentine's Day, and even during, I guess, Chinese Valentine's Day, Qi Shi, right? So it's become very popular. Evidently, it has, and of course, it has that red color. So red symbolizes love. So it's appropriate for Valentine's Day, and of course, as you know, Christmas uses a lot of red with green. So if you have red velvet cake during Christmas, it seems appropriate. Today, the cake continues to delight dessert lovers. Everywhere with its unique flavor and eye-catching appearance, making it a timeless classic in the world of baking. So here we've got the word delight, which could be a noun, but here it's being used as a verb. It's going to delight dessert lovers. It's going to make them very happy. They'll be delighted to eat this cake. So they'll be so happy because they get to experience its unique flavor. Making it a timeless classic in the world of baking. So when we talk about something being timeless, it means that it won't go away because of times changing. So it will always be able to stick around, and you will always remember it, and it'll always be around. So this cake will always be around because of the way it tastes and the way it looks. So we know that the red velvet cake looks beautiful. So it could be used on lots of different occasions in all. Sorts of cultures. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen to Hanny now after she finishes her piece of red velvet cake. Good afternoon, students. Hello, I'm Hanny. We're going to look at today's lesson's key points. Lesson one: 
。红丝绒蛋糕的确切起源仍然是一个谜。但普遍被认为，它是在一九一零年左右出现在美国。文中是用单字 emerge 去表达出现、为人知晓的意思。那我们来学它的字首字根。好，看到 m e r g 或是 m e r s 这一类字根，它有下沉、下降或是骤降的意思。那么在 emerge 这个字当中，它的字首 e 表示向外，那么 merge 表示下沉。那当某个东西从下沉的状态向外。向上浮出，应该可以联想到 emerge， 它有出现、浮现或是显现的意思。那么在 emerge 后面接名词字尾 e n c y， 会变成 emergency， 表示紧急状况。那我们可以试着想象，某件事情啊，它原本是隐没、没被注意到的状态，当它突然冒出来，就需要立即的关注，需要紧急处理。那用这样的方式，也许可以联想到 emergency， 它有紧急状况的意思喽。好，顺便补充一下其他有这类字根的单字。第一个是 submerge， 它的字首 s u b 表示下方，那么 merge 表示下沉，往下方沉下去，应该可以联想到 submerge， 它的意思就是潜入水中，使什么潜入水中，没入水中，静默的意思。好，那么第二个补充的是 merger。它的字根 m e r g 表示下沉 ，e r 是名词字尾，那合在一起 merger 表示合并并购。同学们可以想象，当某家公司被并购，就好像没入了另一间公司里，消失不见了。那这样应该可以联想到 merger， 它可以指这种公司、企业等等的合并。好，第三个补充的是 immersion， 它的字首 i m 是来自 i n， 表示进入。M E R S 表示下沉，那么 I O N 是名词字尾。那我们可以用心思沉入某事物，完全沉浸在里面去联想说 ，immersion 它有沉浸、专注的意思。课文第三部分则提到说，最近由于各种流行文化的提及，这种蛋糕再次变得时尚。那文中是用片语介系词 thanks to 去表达由于怎么样怎么样。那么 thanks to 后面可以接人或是事物，意思跟 because of 接近。不过呢 ，thanks to 常常会用在正面的原因，所以它就带有那种幸亏怎么样，多亏怎么样的语义哦。例如。Thanks to your help, I was able to solve the problem successfully. 多亏了你的帮忙，我才能顺利解决问题。好，那另外 ，thanks to 有时也会用反讽的语气来表达归咎的原因。举例来说 ，Thanks to you, we now have to do it all over again. 都是因为你，我们现在又必须重来一遍了。那这时候当然就不是真相的语义喽。好，那以上今天重点整理，我们来回顾这些单词吧。Striking, its striking colors and delicate details made the painting catch everyone's attention. Emerge, with his new hit album, the singer has emerged as a major star. Version, the latest version of the phone includes several new features. Dye, Clara used blue and green dyes to make the boring white dress far more colorful. Boom, the small island's tourism boom has brought some negative environmental effects. Reference: Dan is fond of making references to his favorite TV show in casual conversations. Delight: The clown delighted the children with silly jokes. Discussion starter starts now. Here's our discussion starter for today. Have you ever eaten red velvet cake? If yes, what did you think of it? If no, would you like to try it? Why or why not? Well, like I said, yes, I've already tried red velvet cake, and I thought it was delicious. I love it. It's one of my favorite cakes. However, I've noticed that sometimes the red velvet cakes that I've had in Taiwan tend to be a little dry. Well, like I said, I had not eaten red velvet cake until very recently, and、uh, right now I'm thinking that、uh, I would like to have a piece of red velvet cake, but I'm not really sure where to buy it in、uh, Taipei. But I'm sure lots of bakeries offer it for a reasonable price. I think we should just make our own, Roger. That sounds good. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Kiki. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.